Previously on the Central European Odyssey, we travelled to Prague, followed by Vienna, and explored both cities by metro. In this episode, we adventure through Vienna on the Orange Metro Line, travel across to Bratislava and check out the Slovakian capital, before a very messy journey back to the UK. So it's my final full day in Vienna before travelling to Bratislava on the bus tomorrow. Um, I've come to Simmering at the end of the Orange Line where I am hoping to film a good video on U-Bahn Line number 3 from um, Simmering through the centre to Otakring, which I'm not sure how far that is out. I think it might be fairly central. I'm not sure if it's one of those where it goes right outside the other end of the city or not. But even this side, um, this place seems quite busy. There's a lot of restaurants and buildings and stuff. So it could be an interesting one today, hopefully. Other than that, it's a really hot day again, early 30s, I think. Fairly high um, humidity by the feel of it. But anyway, I'll get this video started. And with that, the filming for the Orange Line video was underway and it was into Simmering Station to grab a ticket, catch the U-Bahn and get the latest Metro Line adventure going. This journey was going to take us 12.1 kilometers north and northwest through the Austrian capital, taking in the sights and sounds of the city, both overground and underground. The first port of call was Gasometer, which features four huge converted 19th century gas containers, which now house shops, supermarkets, apartments and office spaces. A really unique and funky first stop, and something I've never seen anywhere else I've been in the world. From here we wandered across to the next station, Erdberg. This part was easy as it was close to where I was staying and therefore I already knew where to go. A quick whirl through Vienna Erdberg bus station, which is a really handy stop for both short and long range buses across Central Europe and it was back into the U-Bahn station of the same name next door to continue the journey. From Erdberg we took the train to the next stop Cardinal Nagelplatz which is a fairly central neighbourhood but felt really like an oasis of calm in a big city. Cool graffiti, phone box libraries and quiet shaded places to sit. Awesome! But, as always, with these Metroline adventures there wasn't much time to sit around and it was time to walk further into the inner neighbourhoods towards Rockerskasse and luckily for me, a street shower with Wiener Wasser and no, I still haven't gotten over how filthy that sounds. The alleyways of the central neighbourhoods led us beautifully through on foot, through a quaint little market and some stunning little restaurant lined streets towards the next U-Bahn station, Landstrasse. Some stunning city centre parks connected Landstrasse to the following station, Stubentor. Rather than going back underground and sweating to death in the summer heat, we continued on foot through some interesting art installations, a splattered statue and a tasty looking sweet shop towards one of Vienna's most famous sites, which also featured in the Red Line video a couple of days earlier, Stephansplatz, centering around the iconic cathedral Stephansdom. This time we were heading through the Stephansplatz area in a different way, tracking the path of the Orange Line towards the next station, Herrengasse. From here it was on to my personal highlights of the day, the first being the absolutely fabulously stunning Volksgarten. What a place to explore or even just sit and watch the world go by on a beautiful day. Heading out of the other side of the Volksgarten, we passed another of Vienna's standout buildings, the Austrian Parliament, on the way to my favourite station on the line, Volkstheater. Absolutely obsessed with the design of this station and the stunning artwork looming high over the tracks. It was then by metro to another of Vienna's major train stations, Westbahnhof, for a brief look around. And finally a little cruise through the last few stations to the end station Otterkring to complete another highly enjoyable metro line adventure. The full video with further description and more details is available on the channel already. So that's it with filming for today. Another scorcher, maybe slightly, slightly less than the previous two days, but still incredibly sweaty. Um, incredibly dehydrating 
and almost hard to think you get kind of tension headaches from sort of thinking where am I what am I doing what am I filming what am I saying so yeah I'm potentially walking back to my hotel rather than taking the subway just because it's a bit more chill now and then tomorrow off to Bratislava so my time in Vienna is just about up I'm sitting having a little um, kind of Austrian version of a meal deal which is just like really expensively buy sandwiches and crisps and drinks um, and then I'm gonna head a couple of blocks away to the bus station Erdberg to get the bus to Bratislava fingers crossed everything goes smoothly I'll uh, probably make a little video on that as well keep the channel full of content for everyone um, so yeah see you in Bratislava Obviously, as this set of Central European Odyssey videos are a little kind of behind the scenes of the full trip, it'd be rude not to take you all on the journey to Bratislava with me. So, we're back after Erdberg bus station to find the Flixbus to Bratislava, or as it's become known in some of the video comments, Baby Prague. Love that. The bus station itself is fairly basic and if you ever happen to get a bus from here be aware that some of the stands are actually on the roadside rather than in the terminal part itself. The journey from here to Bratislava takes just over an hour and picks up the majority of passengers at Vienna airport before hitting various stops in the Slovakian capital and finishing up at Bratislava airport. There is a specific tutorial already on the channel with full information on how to get from Vienna to Bratislava using Flixbus. For us it's time to get off at most SMP, the closest stop to the old town. Well I've just arrived in Bratislava and my first priority before trying to find the hotel which I think is a couple of kilometres out of town is to try and find that iconic Seattle based coffee house or however they describe themselves. Starbucks because I am need of, I am in need of a cup of tea so and probably cake so I'm gonna go and find a Starbucks before I try and find the hotel because apparently the hotel doesn't seem to care when you arrive you just have to call them because there's no receptionist so see what happens oh, well I'm all topped up on caffeine which was definitely a really good decision I'm now about halfway walk into the hotel which was a really bad decision. Um, probably should have just tried to get on one of these trolley bus things. Um, it's probably only gonna take another 15 minutes maybe to walk there, but I think this might be the first and last time that I'm gonna walk to it. Let's just say that. It's far too hot to be like, it's kind of up a hill as well, so not ideal for being covered in sweat wherever you go. Anyway, after a walk that was actually quite ridiculously long and uphill, we arrived at Hotel Maxim. Well, I made it to Hotel Max, fairly simple check-in. And I also managed to ask them about the bus tickets because you can't buy it on the bus. So they sold me like a 30 minute one to get back into the city. But in the city, basically you have to look up yellow machines and buy 24 hour tickets, things like that. So let's take a quick look around the hotel room. So we've gone for a dinky little room this time. Single bed, sexy chair. Don't know what the view from the window is like, let's have a look. Oh yeah, pretty nice. That sound was from the window, not a random fart. <laughs> yes. And I've gone for a single bed because this room came with a bath. Oh, absolutely so in need of a bath. Amazing. Next, time for an evening of relaxation for Nick. Woohoo! So I've decided to be more sensible and not try and walk this again because it's probably a 40, 45 minute walk. So I'm taking a bus, hopefully 83 or 84, into the city centre to get some food, maybe get some more tea, and just have a chilled evening where I'm not really filming anything particular other than this. Um, yeah, and then tomorrow I'll do a full on Bratislava walk around tour and see what we can find. These are the little bus tickets that you need for the Bratislava City buses. So that was a nice little night out in the city. I managed to get my Starbucks hit just before it closed, get some food, have a walk around. The bar scene and the atmosphere is just so nice. And I think the prices obviously are more comparable to Prague rather than Vienna, even though Vienna is closer. Vienna is much more expensive. Um, 
So yeah, pretty good overall. I think Bratislava makes a good break from the UK because there are a lot of cheap flights coming here. And I'm just looking for the bus. No, no, that's not my bus. Um, there are a lot of cheap flights coming here. Uh, particularly, it would be a good place to go, um, like hop to Budapest, because that's only two and a half hours from here. Anyway, now, before I get ahead of myself, I'm going to see if I can get back on bus number 84 to the hotel, because there's no way I'm doing that walk again, ever. And the buses run very smoothly. More relaxation before a full vlogging day on day 11 of the overall trip. So it's the last full day abroad of this Central European adventure. Um, so we've got a full day in Bratislava, trying to make a video. It's already the afternoon. I've been a bit lazy today, not gonna lie. Um, I need food, I need hydration. It's a similar story all the time of these trips. Um, the bits may appear fairly polished once they're edited-ish, um, but the bits in between are usually me going, uh-oh, where's Starbucks, right? I need food. Um, so yeah, you can see the castle behind me. Probably have a wander up there later. I haven't really decided what to do on this one. I think I was so busy with researching and thinking about actually there's a lot in Vienna, there's a lot in Prague on those subway lines. How, how on earth is that going to work? And then obviously finding things along the way as well. Whereas this, it was kind of, I haven't done much planning of this really. So this really is just going to be random. Woohoo! So it was time to climb up towards Bratislava Castle and start an adventure around the city. Another absolutely boiling day left me drowning in sweat but still enjoying the views in and around the castle and down over the Danube River and UFO Bridge. Lots of nice places to sit and chill, enjoy the atmosphere and the scenery. From here, we headed back down into the old town on what so far seemed to be a rather quiet day in the city. That's the most SMP bus stop where we got off the bus from Vienna yesterday. Traversing through the cafes and restaurants, city squares and more of those handy water sprayers, it was out the other side towards the riverside which led us towards the Urovea shopping centre, which was pretty much a standard city shopping centre complex but it did have a good variety of shops and a cool water feature connecting through different levels of the building. Following a beer bike always seems like a good idea, right? In this case it actually was and we were drawn across to the stunning blue church, definitely worth checking out. Heading back into the centre of the old town, the weather seemed to be fully on the turn and the streets deserted. What seemed like some kind of impending storm never actually materialised and as we wandered back into the main tourist area, a beautiful sunset blessed the final night of the trip. I figured it'd be rude not to go and check out the UFO bridge and the castle all lit up at night, so that's exactly what we did. A final wander through the beautiful streets of the old town, and that was the Bratislava vlog, officially wrapped up. It was then time to have a stroll up out of the old town to catch the bus back to the hotel. So that's another day of filming done. Not sure how that vlog is gonna turn out. I really was not feeling it today. I was just very, very tired and just took a massive break in the middle to just have food and relax and just watch the world go by, sit in the square, sit in the cafes. It was really nice actually. It's sometimes hard for today after day after day after day to film everything, talk about everything, but yeah. It's the last day of the trip, so I'm heading into the old town to get some lunch. I was kind of hoping after last night when the weather cooled a little bit that it would be cooler today, obviously, for traveling back, carrying on my bags and stuff. Um, but apparently not, it's blazing sunshine yet again. So we're gonna do a couple of hours, I think, of just lunch, chill, coffee, and then try and work out the airport bus, which nobody here seems to know that much about. And then when you suggest number 61, they're like, oh yeah, number 61 goes to the airport or near the airport but nobody seems to know much about it or where it goes from. I think it's from the main train station. I don't know. It could be one of those really simple things that just nobody really uses. So I think they all use Bolt here, but we'll soon find out. 
yet another scorching day in Bratislava and what a beautiful setting for a spot of lunch. Highly recommend Bratislava for a city break if you've never been. Unfortunately for me, my time in Central Europe was about to be over and I had to start heading towards the airport for what turned out to be a much more chaotic journey home than I'd hoped for. First step was to locate the airport bus which goes from just outside the train station and heads out east towards the airport. Fairly straightforward thus far. And we've made it to the airport. That was actually very easy once you find the bus part outside the train station. Um, it's kind of a bit of an awkward way into the train station, but once you find it, bus number 61, just a local bus that also goes to the airport. Very, very simple, very cheap. Would use that again if there are cheap Ryanair flights into Bratislava for visiting other places, maybe Budapest, or going back to Vienna or Prague in the future. Really easy and cheap. So let's hope the rest of the journey home is as easy and as cheap as, well, should be cheap if everything runs to uh, if everything runs to plan but who knows the British side particularly is always a mess at the moment so let's hope we can get home because as much as I love traveling as soon as you know you're going home really just want to get back so let's hope this runs smoothly uh oh yeah we're about to see why I wasn't certain about it running smoothly Bratislava Airport is your fairly standard airport, a few places to eat, some souvenir shops etc. Nothing flash though. If you're heading to the UK I'd actually advise not going through the extra passport check area until as late as possible, because that part of the departures area is actually really cramped, it's not very fun to be in. And this is where I was also hit with the news of an hour and a half delay due to the inbound flight being behind schedule. Not ideal and that led to a very moody nick landing back in Manchester. Uh-oh. Hmm. So, you might be wondering why in videos I'm always like, oh, if this works out, if this runs on time, if this goes smoothly, when stuff appears most of the time to happen quite smoothly. That's because usually I'm away abroad and stuff abroad tends to run a lot more smoothly than it does here in the UK, which is just as absolute mess slash chaos. It's still light outside, it's about 8.30. Um, the Ryanair flight was delayed by over an hour, which means I can't get the last train back to my town Middlesbrough because it only goes until 7.45 and everything is closed. Yeah, that's why I always say that stuff because you can just guarantee there'll always be something that goes wrong and it's almost always the UK side. Our trains are just an absolute disaster. I've just booked another one into the city centre. I mean, fingers crossed, is it even going to run or not? Who knows? The entire trip through three foreign countries and all the other countries I've been to on the channel always runs fairly smoothly, the UK, I wouldn't bother if I were you. Youch, I was really not impressed. Anyway, to try and salvage the situation, it was time for a short train ride into Manchester city centre to try and get a bus home. Actually, quite a nice and smooth journey with the sun setting, just a shame none of the trains were actually going anywhere near the northeast. Here we are arriving at Manchester Piccadilly train station, and after badmouthing all the British coffee shops for closing so early, uh, the Cafe Nero at the train station was actually open, so that instantly improved my mood. A little bit anyway. I think forgot to film it, which quite often happens when there's food involved, but I just got a meal deal, a sandwich, crisps, drink, tea, and I'm just sitting in this little station outside Piccadilly. I need to go and get a mega bus, which in the UK everybody slags off as like the lowest of the low for travel. But to be fair, could be famous last words again. But to be fair, they're always really reliable compared to the trains. So I'm gonna have to hot foot it across Manchester, just across the city centre to the bus station and hopefully not miss it. Otherwise I'll be fuming. I'm already in a slightly better mood because I had tea, but I'm not gonna get home till at least 2 a.m. if not later, so. And that's probably why I rarely film when there's food around. Chom 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 nom 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 nom. Anyway, time to head over to Shoot Hill Interchange in the hope of finding a bus home. So I realised I need to stop snacking and pick up the pace because I have to actually walk through central Manchester. It's not that far, but it's probably maybe a 10 minute walk through the main area from Piccadilly to the coach station. Hopefully it's going to be a very chill, empty coach, but I also have to change in leads as well which quite often happens, but obviously when you're expecting to have a train that goes directly to where you want to be, 
then you have to take two buses that's going to take till 2 a.m. just because of a delay of about an hour and a half. It's so frustrating. But anyway, have a look at Manchester. I kind of have a love-hate relationship with Manchester. It's sort of like a mini version of London, which is much friendlier because it's northern. Um, but I suppose it depends on your mood, why you're here, what you're doing. Right now, I'd probably hate anywhere, but I don't know. Sometimes these bigger cities or these big UK cities, they feel like more lively, more going on, more happening. But sometimes it just feels like messy and scruffy and just a lot of chaos going on. So we made it to the eerily quiet bus station. <sighs> well, this is very quickly or slowly turned into rather a travel disaster after everything ran so smoothly in the Czech Republic, Austria and Slovakia and basically every country so far that I've done videos from on the channel. The UK is a mess. You miss the train by like five, six, seven minutes and that's it after eight o'clock to go to the northeast where I'm from, from Manchester, you're absolutely <laughs> Normally the buses are better, but there's more pressure on the buses because the trains are so bad. So many, like lack of trains, so many problems with the trains, so many cancellations. And basically looking at the trackers on the bus, I would have to take two buses, Manchester to Leeds and Leeds to Middlesbrough. But the bus from Manchester to Leeds is so far delayed that even if I take that one, I'll just end up stuck in Leeds until four or 5 a.m., probably about 4 a.m. when the first trains will go. So I guess lesson of the day is if you if you are basically going to try and travel anywhere in the UK after 8 p.m. you may as well just get a hotel and wait till the next day because our nighttime services from 8 a.m. till at least uh, from 8 p.m. till at least 5 6 a.m. are absolutely shocking. You ain't going to go anywhere. You're just going to have trouble with everything. You're going to book stuff that's going to the game is that is going to then get cancelled, and then you're just going to waste money. Like you may as well get a hotel. The Megabus eventually arrived, or at least a replacement version of it, around two hours late, but I decided I may as well get at least to Leeds. Surprisingly, Megabus actually arranged and paid for a taxi to get me and two other stranded people back to Middlesbrough. In the end, kind of a win. It took about six to seven hours to complete what should have been a two, two and a half hour journey home, but we made it, and overall the adventure through Central Europe was amazing. See you in the next one!